Welcome to your mom's camera. This is a eight megapixel CCD censored point and shoot from 2008, 2006, 2006. This is the Canon A630. So as someone who shoots a lot of cameras, I'm always really interested in what the camera brings out in me as a photographer because I notice that I don't shoot any one camera the same way. And I really enjoy that. I think it's really interesting when I go back and look at my Instagram feed, what a camera draws out of me as an interest. I tend to repeat a lot of themes potentially, but the way I shoot those themes is different with every camera. This camera really encourages kind of a, let's call it like a Dutch angle, loose shooting vibe, a shit cam vibe, if you will, very disposable in nature, but it does it with style like this camera has a lot going for it that you would not or at least i would not expect out of a eight megapixel very consumer grade um plasticky point and shoot camera so specs wise we have a one over 1.8 inch sensor it's a ccd ccd sensor eight megapixels from 2006 as mentioned it has a 35 millimeter to 140 millimeter equivalent lens. It has a variable aperture of uh, 2.8 to 4.1. It does ISO 100, 200, 400, 800. I use this comfortably at 100, 200, sometimes to 400, but we'll get into some of the things I liked and didn't like about this, but I really did not enjoy the noise out of this camera. There are certain cameras that I love the noise from, and I really embrace all the freaking imperfections of it. This isn't one of them. So I was definitely keeping this on the lower end. It has a 2.5 inch rotating and articulating screen, which is amazing on this camera. It also has a viewfinder. Um, it has an optical viewfinder. It is just a box that's, you know, you're basically seeing straight through. It doesn't have parallax or anything really computationally built in except to say that when you zoom the lens it does zoom with you so you do see some rough framing i believe it's about 85 percent it goes up to a max shutter speed of one two thousand five hundredth of a second it does not have a hot shoe like the g series so um you do not have that option but it does have a built-in flash the flash is pretty decent it takes sd memory cards and it takes magical double a batteries. Definitely recommend rechargeable batteries for this, even though bad girl, I do not have them in right now. Um, but I love that this takes double A's because when you run out on the road and you die, you can pick up batteries very easily if you don't carry them with you. Also, the battery life on this is bananas. I have been shooting it for well over two weeks, fairly nonstop hasn't even diminished the battery a little bit. As you can see, it has this really nice grip. So ergonomically, it's quite good to hold and shoot. Like I said, it is a plasticky body. So um, it feels like it has a little, you know, flimsiness to it, but ultimately it is nice to hold and handle. Then it has a little zoom toggle here at the front. Um, and then on the back, you just switch between your play button and your record button here. Uh, and then you have some quick access functions here like your flash exposure compensation and your menu. And then you have just like a function button that you can click and jump right into some of the key areas of the menu. As for modes, it has all your standards, PASM um, on the top here. It has full auto mode program, shutter priority, aperture priority. It has a custom option as well as a manual option. So 
What I was really impressed by with this camera is the fact that you can completely shoot this manually, manual aperture, shutter, manual focus. Um, you are accessing it with buttons here, so there's no dials or anything to dial it in, which can be a little fiddly, but truthfully, these were built pretty uh, intuitively and you just swipe your, yourself over to the next function um, to be able to change your, your shutter speed or your aperture and your autofocus. So or your manual focus. So you do have to flip between things. It's not super straightforward, but for streeting shoot, for streeting shoot, for shooting street, you're mostly just gonna dial that in and run with it. And then you'll just shoot um, or adjust one parameter. In my case, I typically adjust like the shutter speed to a certain point and then move over to the aperture. It has contrast detect autofocus, multi-point within reason, um, single point and continuous. I always shoot on single point. I'm just not like a very good person to evaluate continuous autofocus, so I'm just not gonna touch on it. So if you hit the down button here, um, you get into the, the focus modes and this allows you to do macro focus as well as uh, uh, manual focus. Let me see if that's macro. This is manual. So you get this nice punch to zoom feature. Now you see we're punched to zoom to be able to dial in that focus. And that focus is just gonna be dialed in with the buttons here to the left and right. And then you're back out and you can shoot. Um, it's, it's actually really handy. That being said, the resolution on this screen is not amazing. So, you know, you, you're getting it within reason. However, also it's a very small sensor. So even wide open at 2.8, your depth of field is gonna be pretty much covered. It is also a Four thirds sensor, um, not like micro four thirds, but the four thirds aspect ratio is the output of these JPEGs and it shoots JPEG only. It does not shoot raw. However, there is Chittick. I think I'm saying that right. I've been saying it for years as Chittick. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but Chittick, if you do not know, is a little bit of a hack and a workaround. We'll talk about it some more at the end here. Um, but it allows you to open up a number of features on these awesome old point and shoot cameras from Canon's Canon specific, uh, including raw shooting capability for which there is a Chittick um, for the A630 as well as most of the A series. So let's talk about the lens on this camera, which really and truly surprised me. It's a very sharp lens. It handles flare well and it does something to the highlights that is very unusual for a point and shoot camera. It really graduates the highlights in a way that I don't think I've seen on many other point and shoots. Um, they feel almost like they're diffused with something, like there's a pro mist on it. It just gives a graduation to the highlights in the JPEGs that I was really not expecting and it gives it a very filmic quality. It also has a super solid built-in meter, the meter itself, which I shot almost, you know, always on evaluative, occasionally on spot. But in all of my other reviews, you will pretty much hear me universally say, dial in about negative 0.3 exposure compensation to protect your highlights because most of these digi cams cannot handle highlights. This is no different in terms of like, you don't want to blow your highlights. That being said, the meter it's sort of dialed for that. So I never really had to put any no negative exposure comp in. It was really reading the light very accurately and gave me a solid basis for any editing that I wanted to do with my JPEGs. But the JPEGs themselves were really solid coming straight out of camera. And we'll come right back to that in a moment. Um, but first let's talk about the flash. The flash is a nice strong flash here. Um, it's small and I think it has a five to eight foot range or something like that. Um, but you know, for any close focusing subject uh, that you would want to shoot, you're going to be able to reach them, you know, within reason. This camera has so many options for color. Like it's kind of ridiculous. It's like an early Fuji camera. And let me tell you why. I can't even remember all of these. So I'm just going to read them to you. It has vivid setting, natural setting or neutral setting, sepia, black and white, positive film, lighter skin tone, darker skin tone, vivid blue, vivid green, vivid red, or custom color picture effects. And within those picture effects, you can further customize within five steps, the contrast, sharpness, saturation, red, green, and blue hues, 
and skin tone. I mean, this thing is like bananas. This is 2006 and they had all of these parameters that you could customize. I definitely messed with a few of them, but I do like to edit and post. I would never deny that I'm a, you know, I am a full on tinkerer, self-professed. So I just ended up shooting this mostly in positive film mode and at default. And that was where I started my JPEGs at because what I found was it gave me just enough um, punch and color to then bring that and boost that a slight bit in post. I found them to be a little bit flat as far as files and a little desaturated. So I just always added saturation as well as a sort of light treatment of the OMTC profile on the JPEGs themselves. And that gave me an image I was almost 100% happy with 99% of the time. And speaking of the JPEGs, let's talk about them because they are money, like incredible and very surprising output from this camera. But before we jump into Lightroom and look at these money files and how I've been processing them, I wanted to talk about money for real and how I've been saving it thanks to Mint Mobile, who I'm partnering with for this video. Enticing, right? I'm a busy mom, creator, maker of everything, everywhere, all the time. I'm shooting this weekend, I got two kids, I got homework, I got all kinds of stuff going on, and I have had a phone bill, I'm gonna put this down, I have had a phone bill that I have been paying on auto pay for literally as long as I can remember. I just don't look at it and I don't think about it, but I recently looked at my phone bill and I was paying over $100 for essentially the privilege of sending a few texts, making a couple calls, and of course checking YouTube and Instagram on the road. That just seems ludicrous. Enter Mint Mobile, who have cell phone plans for as low as $15 a month, and you don't sacrifice any data, service, or coverage, and they do that apparently by just cutting out the middleman so they don't have retail stores or anything like that. And their plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, lightning fast 5G, free hotspot, which oh my goodness, I use all the time. All I had to do was go online and enter my carrier, my phone number. Within 15 minutes, I was fully activated on Mint and I was good to go and saving like multiple digicams worth of money every month. So if this interests you as much as it interested me, you can go to mintmobile.com backslash two cameras, link down below, or you can scan the QR code to sign yourself up today. And thank you again, Mint Mobile. Now back to those money JPEGs. <laughs> so like I was saying, the JPEGs out of this camera were shocking in how much latitude they gave me. Now in doing that and really boosting some of those lows or bringing back some of those highs, you do sometimes exaggerate a bit of the chromatic aberration that can make it feel almost like a, like a Diana camera or like, an, uh, like a disposable film camera. Again, so easy to take out in Lightroom by just adjusting these sliders here at the bottom. And if I wanted to shoot raw, I could just do that Chittick upgrade and then shoot to my heart's content. So you are in my layer of sickness, but this box came and I'm not gonna wait to open it until I look better because I love you, but I don't care. Um, so we are gonna open this inside are two photos from the A630, one that I upsampled, and then one that's just my post-process JPEG straight from the camera at its native size. Moment of truth. So these are the two prints. Um, I mean, when you come in, <laughs> honestly, I'm like, don't tell me a Digicam can't print big. This thing looks pretty fly. And that one is the up version. This is the non up version. And you can definitely tell a difference here. I'm gonna punch in where it really matters. This one is definitely sharper because this one was up and sharpened. Whereas this one is basically just my color treatment and that's it. But I mean, I don't know guys, I think that's pretty sweet. I would definitely not worry about printing these files. Other fun things about this camera, it has a stitch assist for panoramas. So while it does not stitch all these shots together for you, 
um, in order to create an in-camera panorama, it will set it up so that when you shoot one shot, it will keep a little bit of a, um, like a, a remnant of that last shot in screen so you can line up the next shot and same for the next shot and the next shot. And then you'll have a series and then in Lightroom or in Photoshop, you can just highlight all of the images that you want to composite or, you know, piece together and the AI within those platforms will just stitch it all together and make it beautiful for you. Um, but it is really helpful. At this point, to be honest, like you probably don't even need that stitch assist. You just get me, 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 and um, the computer will figure it out for you. But it's kind of a fun relic of the past. It also has slow synchro flash, which I don't know, I always think of 2000s when I see this flash effect where you're kind of dragging your shutter. This was super hot when I was living in New York, like all of our photos out of the club were full of this synchro flash. Now I'm old, so you just see my kids with synchro flash, but um, it's still got a great vibe to me. It just makes me happy to see that. And it's just a fun, playful way to experiment with flash as well. And the last thing, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I have a sweet soft spot for any, any old camera that lets you put audio files to your pictures. I never use it, but I love having it there. It, it, it's just a, it's a little bit of a gimmick at this point, but I do, I do really like having it. And if you really wanted to take this out on the street and shoot it as a journalist, that's really what it was built for initially. It's like you would take a shot and maybe you needed to record the way someone spells their name because you're gonna run that in the newspaper or something like that. Not that I think this is like a pro journalist, you know, tool, but why not? Like go shoot some people on the street and be like, hey, can I send you a photograph? Just record for me your email address and I'll get it to you. That's pretty sweet. That's a great option to have, even today. A pretty fair amount of praise for this camera, but let's talk about what I didn't like. First and foremost, ugh, I mean, not a big shocker, but I hated this viewfinder. Not only is the coverage bad, but it's just not well made. I think it is glass, but it feels plastic. There's no diopter on it. It is just, a foggy mess. Um, I know my eyesight isn't great, but I think the viewfinder is responsible for a lot of my gripes with the, the way I would see through this thing. It's just, it's just bad. And then, like I said earlier, the ISO noise on this, this is just not one of those cameras like, you know, the Kyocera fine cams that a lot of the Digicam Love crew are shooting where, you know, there's a character to the noise that is really awesome and wonderful this ain't that like this has mushy noise it's just not i don't like it so i definitely want to keep this on the low isos i'm pretty much locking it off at 100 and if i can't shoot at 100 i'm putting the flash on i just don't like the noise characteristics of this camera another you know plus slash negative um it can go either way but it is definitely not the smallest digicam like this is a chunky boy it um it makes it easier to shoot and it gives you this really nice articulating rotating screen, but it's not gonna be the easiest thing to throw in a pocket. You definitely want a bag for this. And then the last negative that I will say is that it is slow to shoot. I mean, all of these old cameras are slow to shoot. That's no big surprise, but there's a shutter lag on this that drove me a little bit crazy. So I'd see something and I'd be like, oh, great moment. And I'd, and it would just be that half a second delay of it actually taking the picture that drove me a little crazy. The way to get around that is shooting in manual focus mode. And again, small sensor. So even at 2.8, your depth of field is probably going to be sufficient to cover what you're trying to shoot. You know, the other thing that is surprising is how much depth of field or fall off you can create with this in the right circumstances, with the subject being the right distance from the camera and there being enough depth behind them to create a fall off. This is a shot I took in San Francisco and you can kind of see the effect that I'm talking about here. So you can create that nice soft effect, but it has to be a little bit dialed. Like it's it's not gonna be on most of your shots. You really have to position your subject in the right place to do that. So last but not least, let's circle back to the Chittick conversation. So Chittick, if you don't know, it's a firmware extension to unlock things like raw shooting, but additionally live histograms, zebra mode, shutter speeds up to 40th, 
four thousandth of a second um, down to 64 seconds, so long exposure. It has things like scripting interface. You can play Tetris on this thing. It's so wild. I think it's brilliant, this community that has created all these Chittic hacks for all of these cameras. Um, bracketing is another option. Time-lapse videos, motion detection. It's, it's wild, it's amazing, it's beautiful. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Now, there are options like Stick, which automate all this stuff and it's brilliant. All you have to do is take a picture on your, on your camera, put the SD card into your computer, turn on this software and it will identify the camera, download the software, and then install it for you onto the SD card. And then you just have to implement the install. And you, it doesn't actually mess with your camera overall. It doesn't like reprogram your camera. It's a um, kind of a software you turn on within the camera. And then you have to like, as I understand it, turn it on every time you wanna use it that way in camera. So it can be a little bit frustrating in terms of having to do that every time you use the camera, but it opens up so many possibilities and it's a great party trick. Sexy back. Yeah. Okay, we did it. You guys all chose the next camera. I am excited about it. I am also dreading it because I love Sigma cameras and I hate Sigma cameras. <laughs> So the next camera I will be shooting is the Sigma DP2 Merrill. This will be the first Merrill I have reviewed on the channel. I have plenty of videos on the Quattros and the DP, um, wait, DP Quattro, SD Quattro, whatever. I've done some others, um, but never a Merrill. So follow me on Instagram if you wanna see shots from that over the next two weeks as I shoot the DP2 Merrill and come back here in a couple weeks and we will review it together. I will see you then.